I was gonna re-record this whole video, like redo it, because it's not my best. Um, but then I remember what my homegirl Sweet Brown said. Anybody got time for that? So enjoy this cobbled together mess. You're welcome. So a lovely company, Ewin, who sells gaming chairs, reached out to me to send me a chair for me to review. And I was like, yes, because I need a new office chair. It gets here, Andrew or Bob, depending on who you are, lovingly puts it together for me. Then I'm in my room. I'm in my office looking for it. And I can't find the chair that he put together for me. And then I stumble upon this. How's the chair? I like it. Yeah, I, I thought that was mine. You put it together for me. Well, I need it for one. <laughs> Do you have other chairs you could use? Look at that. Not ergonomic. Is <laughs> okay. How? What do you think of it? Great posture. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Bring it up. But you got to sit up straight while you're in battle. Yeah. All right. Well. I don't have to be that high. I like my feet touching. Okay. Well, I guess it's being gamed in as a gaming chair. Guess I still need an office chair, huh? <laughs> Warning: You're about to see some extreme hot fashions. I told you, hot fashions. Okay? Because I had to come up in here. I gotta sneak to try out my own chair because it's been commandeered by that man. You see old girl back there? Whack. She did what she had to do, but she's going, she's going to the street. But now I got these. But I might go to sleep. But I need to sit up. I need to have it up. This works perfectly with this level of my, I can bring it down a little bit, on my desk. Good ergo positioning. Like this little pillow to put right at the small of my back helps me sit up straight. Hopefully he doesn't notice that it's gone. <laughs> it's mine anyway. But also for real, like perfect, you can still get one in time for Christmas and they are on sale. And then you can use my name, Jess, and get another 25% off and I checked. So it actually works like on top of the sale, a steal. So if you were looking for a gaming chair, even a desk chair, because I'm using it for my office chair, now's the time to grab one. It will be linked down below with my code. Thank you to Ewen for sending me this chair. Hey. Hi, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's me, Jess. I don't know if I ever said it's me, Jess, before, but we're going with it because why not? Um, so we're here with a spot of tea uh, requested by many. And I thought this was gonna be long. I don't think this video is gonna be super long because one, there's a bunch of other videos about it and TikToks. And two, the information has already been very condensed for me. So if you haven't seen those things, I'm here to bring it to you. I'm in a more condensed version. So you don't have to wonder who or what and uh, where, what, why. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, let's see, let's, let's hear it for the, sorry. That's what, <laughs> that was, <laughs> that's what's in my head. I'm tired. Okay, train. <laughs> Have the windows open, let in some fresh air, but train said. See, that's why I would just wanted to turn the air on. In 2024, of course, we're gonna have a slew of debut authors. And one of those debut authors, a 8.5 by 11, YT, people decided to act 
a fool. How did they act a fool, you ask? Let me see you. So, as I said, they're debuting in 2024. And so, instead of, I don't know, supporting, uplifting other 2024 debut authors, they did the opposite. Allegedly. <sighs> so on Goodreads, you know, our raggedy website with one employee, you can look at people, what they've rated. And people found a trend that it looked like they were these fake accounts that were going, and I will have this all inserted here. I'll just go through, because there's a 31-page Google document where I saw this information, and I will show it on the screen, and it'll show like an account, and then there are lists, because you know on Goodreads the books get separated into lists like most anticipated fantasy for 2024, or best cozy fantasy, all these different lists that these books were on, and another book. On every list there were multiple books by mostly authors that were not white, and on all of these lists there was also this one book and it was called Crown of Starlight. And so you're like, okay, and what? But Crown of Starlight would always have five stars and all the other ones usually had one star or maybe two if they were lucky. And so as you'll see in the document, there's all these different names, like they got very creative with the different names and they would leave a one or two star on these other books, these debut books, so they have not even come out yet for next year. And then a glowing five star review for their own book. Now, uh, apparently, so the author of Iron Widow, Shirin J. Zhao, was talking about this on Twitter and had, you know, all the people like, oh my god, oh my god, who are they talking about? And so a friend of Kate's reached out to them and was like, oh, I made all those accounts to help Kate. And, uh, Apparently in a 2024, a private Slack for 2024 debut authors, Kate admitted that they were indeed the person who was the subject of Zhao's tweets and also saying the same story of, oh yeah, my friend did that. And then there's these really sloppily edited screenshots of a conversation of the friend admitting to Kate like, oh, on your behalf. I created these accounts for you and just was like hyping your book up. I'm so sorry. And then and you can look at it here and I'll probably read it out to you. I don't have it in front of me, but it's like. I was then contacted by an associate of Kate's who told me the accounts were actually made by a friend of Kate's from the Raylo fandom who thought they were helping Kate out. And I was given screenshots of a conversation of Kate discovering this. I did not believe this explanation. I did not believe this was a real conversation. I found it so stilted and there was a sudden villain twist at the end on the friend's part. And I didn't notice this until later, but the timestamps jump from yesterday to today in the same screenshot. Like, what is this quantum dynamic time travel conversation? But in a moment, I asked for screenshots of more conversations between Kate and this friend that must go back to at least April, and I would not end up receiving any further evidence. What you can say, and why I said allegedly, is that the screenshots of Goodreads don't prove that it was this author either. What um, has been said is that one of the accounts, CC, that is in the screenshots is uh, Kate, that's the Kate Corain is the author, is that is her personal account by the friends list. And so when I was looking through this, I was confused because I'm like, it, uh, I mean, it's like, it reminds me of when, what was that Emily somebody, what was her name? And she was making, she was making uh, troll accounts on Twitter. And so it's like, it's not 100% you can prove it, but it's just like all of the things adding up are just looking very, very shady. She can't produce any receipts, just like the eerie, simil the eerie, the random chance that on all these lists that her books are on, mostly focused on books debuting in 2024, all of them have these magical glowing reviews for her book, and then all the other ones have these low by these same accounts that seem to have like, you know, it's just, it looks like it's adding up. But again, allegedly. Also apparently, she was, is a Raylo fic fan fiction writer. And people from in the video that I watched on TikTok, I guess people in the Raylo fandom were also commenting. And 
That's when the Raylos entered the courtroom and took to the witness stand. They were like, we have cross-referenced our group chats and we do not know of any Lily among us. Furthermore, textual analysis of this conversation, using Kate's old fanfiction as a reference, points to this being written by the same person. What's worse is that the two biggest Raylo writers, who became actual published authors, Ali Hazelwood and Taya Guanzong, were among the books that got bombed. Taya especially had been friends with Kate for years. They've met in real life. Taya gave Kate's book a really heartfelt endorsement. And Kate proceeded to rate Taya's book, The Hurricane Wars, two stars with all the fake accounts. And all of this, when I was hearing like murmurings of it, I was like, mm. to me it sounded like this is not to say this is not a big deal. Like, I don't know what the fuck. This is alleged. But if it is true, who, I said, who in 2023 is making fake accounts? Are we, who has time? Really? This is what we're doing? Um, allegedly, Kate's friend has time to do that. But I was just like, I'm not surprised. And this again is one of the reasons I stopped doing book community regularly because I was like, it, for a while, it seemed like every week we were getting something like, oh, what? Oh my gosh. Oh, and I'm like, I, this is not surprising. This is textbook woman behavior. It's not surprising to me. Still upsetting, but not surprising. And of course, most of the books being by authors of color, which um, any of the books that were targeted on Goodreads, I'll list them down below if you wanna check them out. Um, see if you wanna support them and pre-order them. But I, uh, I don't get it. I don't know why you can't just let your work stand on its own. Why you gotta bring other people down. You would have been fine. Your book would have come out. The book talk girlies might have ate it up, who knows? I don't know if it was gonna be in any book box or anything. I hadn't heard of it once I saw the cover, but also who am I? I don't pay attention to everything. So I don't know if it had like, um, you know, some hype around it, but you really just that, didn't you? That wasn't smart at all. I don't understand. It like, not to be political, but <laughs> life is political. Um, why? Why is it a common trend of white women to work against their own best interests? You know, just like how a lot of white women voted for Donald Trump. I don't get it. And so, what would ha what would help you as a debut author would be to support other debut authors or well, at the very least mm, i don't know just not do this and yet allegedly this is what you did this is the kind of nasty behavior that you want to go into the new year with mm, 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 mm. nasty work nasty alleged work okay not trying to get sued anyway Read that book if you want. I hadn't heard of it, so I wasn't going to read it anyway. But I will, uh, you know, I'll share the links down below if you want to pre-order any of those debuts from the other authors. Because at least I don't see anything about them being asshole. The main victims of this are The Poisons We Drink by Bethany Baptiste, So Let Them Burn by Camila Cole, To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods by Molly X. Chung, Voyage of the Dam by Francis White, and Mistress of Lies by K.M. Unright. These are all upcoming books, so please support them and their authors after everything they've been through. And also another author really unfairly targeted is R.M. Virtues. He is a black indie author, and Kate once starred his Gods of Hunger series, probably because they're also Greek myth fantasy romances. Please. Well, 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 I give you the consequences of your alleged actions. This is from Delray Books. This was tweeted today that I'm editing this Monday, December 11th. We are aware of the ongoing discussion around author Kate Corain. Crown of Starlight is no longer on our 2024 publishing schedule. Cha, 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 cha. That's rough. What is this? Not going from no longer on our publishing schedule. I mean, to their credit, they didn't say we will no longer be publishing it, but they were like, let's just push it back to give people time to forget what a menace this author was, but we're still gonna publish this book. So I guess if you wanted it and you didn't get an arc of it, you just gotta wait a few more years cause it's gonna come out. Interesting. Y'all, this is my third time editing this video because 
just things keep happening. Now, she has released a statement. And you know I'm going to read it to you. Buckle up. Dear friends, family, readers, fellow authors, and members of the publishing community, since June 2022, I've been fighting a losing battle against depression, alcoholism, and substance abuse, the full scope of which I've hidden from everyone in my life out of shame and a misguided belief that with the right medication or enough therapy, I could beat it. In late November 2023, I started a new medication, and on December 2nd, 2023, I suffered a complete psychological breakdown. During this time, I created roughly six profiles on Goodreads, and along with two profiles I made during a similar but shorter breakdown in 2022, I boosted the rating of my book, bombed the ratings of several fellow debut authors, and left reviews that range from kind of mean to downright abusive. Two of those authors, Molly X. Chung and Danielle Jensen, are fellow Del Rey authors. Camilla Cole and Bethany Baptiste just happened to be on the wrong Goodreads list at the wrong time. I felt no ill will towards any of them. It was just my fear about how my book would be received running out of control. My memories of this are extremely fuzzy, so it's possible there are a couple other authors. If so, please know I take full ownership of what I did to you as well. I'm sorrier than you'll ever know. There's nothing I can say to erase what I did to you. When I was slapped on the wrist by Goodreads and vague tweeted by a handful of people, I panicked that my secret was about to get out. And rather than taking responsibility for my actions, I tried to cover my tracks. Still, in the middle of this breakdown, I made up the world's sloppiest chat with a non-existent friend who was supposedly to blame and sent fake apologies for the actions of said friend, which only made things worse. I betrayed the confidence of my agent, my pub team, my readers, and my friends, and I betrayed my own deeply held values. I also dragged one of my dearest friends and fellow debut authors into the mud with me when she came to my defense. I'll leave her name out of this so as not to pull her in even deeper. However, she wishes to come forwards, I'll apologize to her publicly as well. Let me be extremely clear. While I might not have been sober or of sound mind during this time, I accept responsibility for the pain and suffering I caused and my delay in posting this due to spending the last few days offline while going through withdrawal as I sobered up enough to be brutally honest with you and myself. I know some of you won't forgive me and I recognize that you're not required to. No one ever wants to be judged by their worst actions, but that's not always up to us. I'll be reaching out to everyone directly impacted, though that may take time since I'm checking into an ex intensive psychiatric care and rehab facility, which means I'll be mostly off social media as I need to give 100% to the program if I want it to stick. All I can do going forward is try to live my life in a way that shows you these aren't empty words, yours with so much love and the utmost heartbreak, Kate Corain. So I... I hadn't read that before reading it just now. I just had heard from a few people and whoever sent it to me what the the gist of it was. And I, I don't know. I find it too difficult to know what to say um, as someone who also suffers from depression. Um, I don't um, have a substance abuse problem, but I also don't want to, so I don't want to like speak on that. I don't know. I feel like this makes the situation more complicated and I don't think that it absolves her from anything, which she seems to state in her apology letter. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't want to call someone a liar either. I don't want to say that you're making, you know, shit like this up. So I hope that if these are the things that she really is suffering through, that she is really taking her treatment seriously because um, that's, a, that's a scary place to be in. Um, and yeah, so anyway, I'll still have the authors that were impacted listed down below. Um, there's still, you know, a lot of wonderful debut authors who I'm sure there is a person out there. Um, any of their books would you would enjoy you know from the wide variety of people who are in my audience so just check those out and see if there's something you may enjoy there I don't know this just like I feel like before this part it was like wow why girl you crazy and like why 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 you just really fumbled the bag and then this I don't know I don't know if if this, this is me giving her too much sympathy but I I don't know I'm gonna take it for what it is um and yeah, I don't know. So I would love to know your thoughts. 
this is should be the last update or this will be the last update because I am putting up this video so if something else happens then you'll just have to get it later <laughs> okay I couldn't bother to be on camera for the remaining part of this because I look a trend a trendus <laughs> horrendous atrocious so you're just gonna get screenshots and my voice you're welcome Okay, something else um, the book talk girlies are up in arms about. Apparently, this book just came out and people are really excited about it. It's called Never by Jessa Hastings, who is the same author who wrote the popular Magnolia Parks series, which I think are romances. I haven't read them. I'm not sure. Um, definitely seen the covers and been interested, but this is a new one called Never. And it is a fantasy romance, of course. Romanticy is very much the thing right now. But apparently this is also a retelling or reimagining of Peter Pan. So there I came across a couple of videos of people talking about it. And we're saying like this book is this is really terrible, terribly written. There's some racist things in here. People shouldn't read it. And so, of course, I had to go to Goodreads and see what they're talking about because I have no idea. And so I'm just going to read you a couple of the top reviews that popped up. This first one, we have a quote that says, his skin is so tan that he looks dirty. And the person said, Ayo, what did she say? Another one says, free me from this hell and take me back to planet Earth. Thank you very much. This was literally my most anticipated release. Uh, gonna get a rubber band to slap my wrist with every time I find myself excited for a new release. And there's like a video of someone putting a clown face on. Yikes. Um, another one said, this is very long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but four words to describe this book initially, enjoyable, infuriating, disappointing, and unsettling. They gave it one star. So they obviously did not enjoy much of it, but it's a very long review. It goes into all the different characters, but it's saying, don't get me started on the last 30% as it felt like such a joke. It was stupidly underwhelming and anticlimactic. It pains me to give this under five stars because of my love for Magnolia Parks, but this wasn't the retelling I would have wanted. The potential to have been fascinating was there, but it undeniably failed for me and I wish I loved it. So that one, I don't know, in the middle of all of the stuff, they may have said something else, but those were some of the top ones. Another one, well, that was disappointing. One star. Um, this one star says, why were a 22 and 23 year old waiting for a 17 year old girl to turn 18 so they could have sex with her? Jessa Hastings, please never write a fantasy book or another book. Uh, another one star rating says Jessa Hastings shines when she writes about spoiled rich silver spoon 20 year olds that do drugs and cheat on each other. We love the mess. We love the drama, but the fantasy genre, not for her. She needs to leave it to people that actually know how to write. Ooh. When I read the words Peter Pan retelling, I thought cute little fantasy book, not Peter Pan smut. Help. Also a 22 year old character jokes about waiting for the protagonist to turn 18 before he has sex with her. Come on now. What we'll editor approved this? Overall, it's a flop and I'm not surprised. Hmm. Yeah, so there's lots of one star and two star reviews. Um, so then I saw a video from a creator who it was one of their anticipated releases. And she was basically saying like, stop reviewing books you haven't read because there have been some people who have just heard things from other people, gone to Goodreads and rated the book, which I agree. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand why people do that. But a lot um so some of those reviews I read does sound like they um read the book but apparently there have been people and maybe also on TikTok reviewing quote unquote the book and they haven't read it but going off of what they've heard and so she was saying that the because I guess there's comments about like brownies um but I think in the story those are like little elves but they're called brownies and so people were saying those had like racist connotations and she was like explaining what that meant and then some other things you know a lot of these authors usually <laughs> use uh not the best words when someone is like brown skinned or they'll call white care like they have conflicting terminology where you're like is this person tan and white or are they brown and so I guess there was some ambiguous language there or maybe the line that I read at the beginning with the tan and looking dirty. So I don't know if that person read the book, but there are some really great reviews of it, um, of the book. I'm assuming that they read it, but I don't, I don't know, but I just saw that on TikTok and I've never, and the creator, the, the creator that I was just talking about also was saying like, if you've never it was like, do, do your research and like, have you read the original Peter Pan story? Because obviously this is based off of that or inspired by that, which 
I've never read the Peter Pan story, and so I don't, I don't know. I haven't read the book, so I'm not going to say whether or not these things are problematic, for less, for lack of a better word. But I just thought that was interesting because I had seen some videos with people saying this is not good, don't read it, and then, and I don't know if those people had actually read it. But what do you think? Do you, I feel like something, no, eh, I was going to say something else about some drama that happened years ago, but I don't know. But word of mouth is very powerful. So the same way you have positive where people are like, oh my God, everyone's loving this book. I want to read it. It can also work for the don't read this book. And then, you know, is that fair to the author? Most of the time I would say no. So I don't know if y'all have heard about this or if you read it. I would love to know. Hey, Papa. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all in game pass. Well, it's all in time for you. Yeah. Let's see what's up. Okay, lastly, I just saw this and I thought I had to put, I was like, let me put this in here just so. If you want to get some books, these might be some good recommendations for you. So this New York City couple checks out five pro-Palestinian children's books indefinitely to prevent indoctrination, quote unquote. So this uh, Roosevelt Island couple, they take in a novel approach to what they say is anti-Israel propaganda in their local library. They check out five pro-Palestinian children's books and will keep them indefinitely to prevent them from being used for, quote unquote, indoctrination. So we have We Are Palestinian, a celebration of culture and tradition. We're in this together. These olive trees, what the kites saw, and homeland. And um, these also will be linked down below. But I'm like, what do you mean? You know what kind of fucking insanity that is? When I see books I don't like at the library, I'm sometimes petty and, and may turn the front wall around. Like, I'm like, I don't want to look at this fucking autobiography of Donald Trump and I turn it around. You know what I'm saying? I just, it's, it's redonkulous to me, to you, for you to go through that level. And for children's books, are you serious? You're taking children's books out of the library? So like, as soon as you don't agree with something, you're going to go to the library and remove the book so that children can't read about that. Are you going to do that with black history? Hmm? Like, it's just the extremes that people who back the state of Israel go to. It's wild to me. It is truly wild to me. And now what they've done is increase um, notoriety, if you will, knowledge about these books. So I hope that all of these books get a boost in sales. This is not to say that it's a good thing that they did it because, you know, when people like to be like, well, book bang increases a book sales. Like, let's not say it's, book, it book, it's not a good thing. But, you know, hopefully people across the United States will be requesting these books from their library or purchasing these books um since these fucking idiots want to be twats and and also how do you indefinitely check something out what library allows that are you or are they just they checked it out and they're not planning on returning it so you're buying those books then like make it make sense there was that um sorry i don't think it was as tantalating tantalizing tantal tantalating tantal Tentacles, tantal, tentacles, tantalizing, tantalize, tantalizing, tantalizing. I don't think it's a word. I don't know. It didn't feel tantalizable when I was reading through the stuff. Not shocked, not surprised, disappointed. So anyway. I know I really don't keep up to date with things, so I'm sorry I can't keep you abreast of many things, but this is how the people are doing their job out there. You do it better than me. So that's it. That's all I got. But thanks for watching. Uh, stay hydrated, moisturize sunscreen, and I'll see you in the next one.